Welcome back to the Grotty Orloff Show. It's uh, episode 267, February the 2nd, 2021. Hey, you know, uh, punk rock zany Phil, the little uh, groundhog, came out today and did not see his shadow, so that means we get another six weeks of winter. But it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. A neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I've always wanted to kill a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please, won't you please, oh, please won't you be my neighbor? You know, I always hated Mr. Rogers with a passion. He was always the guy that was on while you waited for the new zoo review to start. Something where you could see some uh, mini skirts or uh, till something normal started. You know, like, for instance, Sesame Street. But you know, it's a stormy day here in Gratuville. Uh, but you know, storms, thunderstorms, always make me crave a nice frosty bottle of Dr. Pepper. And it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, so I guess I should have my first Dr. Pepper of the day. <laughs> You know, Dr. Pepper, it's the friendly pepper upper. It's uh, it's not a cola, not a root beer. It's the light and lively taste that you'll cheer. You know, last episode I said it's not a soda or a root beer. That's not the correct line. Of course it's a soda. <laughs> what a moron. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go close the window because the storm is getting awfully... Hopefully, uh, fierce and intense. Let's see, hold on. Gotta close the window just a little bit. Yeah, just storm just getting a little too intense. Oh. But we're back here in the uh, Bronze Age comic book room looking at Bronze Age comic books, which is what you would normally do in a Bronze Age comic book room. Oh, let's see what we can do here. Oh, that damn groundhog. It's hard to believe that he could not find his shadow again. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Um, but you know, every day is kind of like Groundhog's Day here in Gratuville. Uh, every day it's the same thing over and over again. But you know, the world of Gratu, the world of Gratu is kind of a strange world. But I'm glad you've come along and are willing to step into my world today. Um, some people say our trade-in process you know, feels too some easy. Some people say they can't believe it's 100% that Gratu has got a very boring shadow. Years. And you know he only has a few cards. subscribers, but you know better. Gratu Orloff's channel is tomorrow. quite amazing. Their new ride and, and their old one away. Because I'm glad that you are willing to step into the world of Gratu Orloff, where every day is filled with comic books and monsters and soda pop. Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? Miracles, I guess, still happen 
now and then stepping to my heart leave your cares behind welcome to my world of torture chambers and monster records built with you in mind Knock and the door will open. Seek and you will find. Ask and you'll be given the key to this world of my I'll be waiting here. With my arms unfurled Waiting just for you Welcome to my world <laughs> You know, Punk Rock Zany Phil uh, six more weeks of winter, but they say that the, the, the groundhog said that waiting just for you. Welcome to my world. The damn turtle or groundhog, whatever the fuck it was, said that after the six weeks of winter, the world is going to open up and we're going to have a wonderful spring. That's what the turtle said. Punk rock, zany, Phil, indeed. But you know, let's look at some comic books. That's what you came here for. But, um, you know, here in this room, all our uh, cares are, are uh, just disappear, especially when we have, uh, let's see what we got here. Comics like this, ladies and gentlemen. Chilling Adventures in Sorcery. That book alone tells you that uh, you, you just... Uh, oh, fuck. Shit. Let's look at some comics, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's see here. Everything's going wrong here on episode 267 of the Incredible Grotty Orloff uh, television program. <laughs> Hold on. The neighbors keep screaming. I'm going to have to make a phone call about this. Where's, oh, here it is. Mm. Ah, damn it. Come out. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah, the neighbor upstairs keeps screaming. Yeah, um. Yeah, you, you, you're going to have to uh, do something about this because I'm filming uh, episode 267. Okay, all right. Let me know when you have accomplished your mission. Oh, yeah, yeah, after lunch. Okay, take care, bye. Oh, man. Nothing works here. <sighs> okay, so um, let's get going here. Right. Found some magazine uh, boards, so that's good. So we can get these, uh, let's get, start uh, bagging some magazines as well.
Okay. <laughs> you don't tell me all the bags are in the other room. Uh, we're going to start looking at some Werewolf by Night comics, but uh, might need to go in the other room. But you know, something that will never go wrong for you is Dr. Pepper, 10, 2, and 4. Dr. Pepper, the friendly picker-upper. And also, artificially sweetened diet Dr. Pepper. It's a carbonated beverage, you know. Let's look at the ingredients. Carbonated water, caramel color, phosphoric acid, citric acid, caffeine, sodium, cyclamate. Cyclamate. <laughs> I can't believe I can't find my glasses. Um, tell you what. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Cyclamate, cellulose gum, saccharin, <laughs> monosodium phosphate, lactic acid, flavoring, spices, one half of one percent benzoda soda preservative, sodium cyclamate, <coughs> weren't cyclamate. <laughs> Weren't Cyclamates banned about 1970? I think they were. I think that bottle might be a little old. Where's my uh, damn fucking thing? Oh, here it is. Um, okay. There's just too much. They're not. The screaming is too much in this room. So we're going to uh, go into the other room. I can't concentrate with the goddamn screaming in here. Welcome to my world. Here's Pete the Cat. Pete the Cat is famous. A cat of Gratu, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just a moment. <clears throat> okay, gotta make a call here. Yep, the uh, room three, room uh, floor seven. Make sure you get extra security in there. Okay. We're going into the secure room. It's actually a vault. Um, a vault of comic books. But I had to let the help know that I'm going in there so they can uh, make sure the door is... Uh, there's a few extra bodyguards there. Um, the light in the hallway burned out. So I have to go to the dollar store and buy another bulb. But in here, <laughs> the light always burns. When we last left off, We were looking at uh, Star Spangled War stories. <clears throat> I thought Friday's episode was terrible. This is going to go up. We're going to have to call Guinness. This may be a make break the record for the worst episode ever. Silver Age. Silver Age comics. Silver Age comics. Oh, yes. Oh, fuck. Okay. Ah, oh, she's a biker. <sighs> Overcome with joy is the space goblin every time we come into this room. She can't believe 
her good luck. She loves company. Okay, when we last left up, we were looking at uh, 133 Star Spangled War Stories. A purple dinosaur. Okay. Oh. 134. Here's, oh, amazing. 138, Enemy Ace. One of my favorite characters, Enemy Ace. Wait, what was that? Oh, these aren't in order. 134. Oh. 123 needs a backing board. That's why I stopped last time. I think we looked at this one, didn't we? 126. 120. Alright. Let's get a backing board into this. Yeah, this is what I was doing last time. I remember commenting on this uh, great ad for the Fright Factory and Creepy Crawler sets. Somewhere I've got uh, one of these catalogs from Aurora and it has pictures of ships and planes, I think. A friend of mine gave it to me because he knew I I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, dinosaurs and soldiers were a wonderful combination. On a summer afternoon in the 60s. And still today, actually. another enemy ace number 140 145 there's his pal the wolf like his only friend special issue 146 48. Here's uh, Star Trek. Most of my issues of Star Trek are going to be Bronze Age. Strange Adventures 183. Strange Adventures 209. Neil Adams sure was prolific there for a while. Two fourteen. Here's two nineteen with a great Joe Kubert cover. Here's 225. I bought this recently for like three dollars. They gave me a discount at Smart 370, but um, I'm gonna put it in a new bag. Plus, give it a board. Um, this comic store I go to is. It's kind of like the comic stores in the 70s and 80s. They just put the old comics in a bag. 
some I guess they put with boards if they're like more pricey. The collector's comics. First of all, I'm looking at the top because uh, I know the the store that I bought this from recently had a they bought a whole lot of comics from some someone that had had a fire. And the comics had not been burned, but they had sustained smoke damage, and there was smoke. You could tell there was uh, a dark coloring on the top of the pages, and so this one didn't go through a fire. So that's good. I don't think they were the comics in that buy were, were this old, which is a uh, well, it's not that old, 1970, but. But actually, this is in 1970. Clearly, this is a reprint from maybe 10 years before. That doesn't look like 1970 art. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm thinking I'm right. All right. Here's a My Light. Will it fit? Probably. I moved some comics out of My Light's yet recently okay so strange adventures something they're calling it Adam strange adventures here um, a hit song from 1909 ladies and gentlemen this is from 1909 I know because it was the school I was teaching at was first opened its first building in 1909 so for the 100th anniversary I dug up a lot of records from 1909 and I remember this was one of them it's not that I have that much of an encyclopedic mind that I can identify the year of a song like that it's there's a reason I remember this particular song S strange suspense stories number eight I must give you full disclosure that I'm not, I'm not that smart okay Back to the Strange Tales. We've seen them before. We'll see them again. Strange Tales 119. Actually, let me look here to see if there's anything I need to file in this box. Okay. Ooh, it's good I looked. Um, there's some... Uh, Star Spangled War Stories I need to file in here. And Steve Zodiac needs to be filed in here. And, uh, and I should put the Space Family Robinson in there. Was, no, that's probably the last, <gasps> last box. I haven't been remembering. That was one of my whole points, is to file these comics in as I go. Okay. So, so now we've got 156 I need to file into the box. I'm, uh, yesterday I was so tired, uh, I didn't do an episode yesterday, I was real sleepy all day. I think I've got, you know, sleep apnea, like, real bad and untreated, and I need to get one of those stupid Darth Vader machines sleeping at night. Okay. All right. So you saw Strange Tales number 119. It's not a very good quality, I mean, good quality, not a very good condition um, copy. Uh, here's 124. Here's uh, 127.
128. I finally got to see last night's, uh, uh, this week's one division last night, uh, episode four. I'm sure normal people are getting rather confused at this point. 129. One thirty. Is that I uh, love this cover so much. As I said before, uh, previous episode, the, Be the Beatles appeared on, or references to the Beatles were all over DC Comics, especially Jimmy, well, maybe mainly Jimmy Olsen Comics, but that may be the only Beatle, there's another copy of it, Beatle uh, reference on the front of a Marvel comic that I can think of. And these Strange Tales comics, for some reason, have not gone up to astronomical levels of value. I, I don't know why when you've got, um, you know, Doctor Strange and Nick Fury. And, but, you know, when I was buying these, mostly I bought these in the 80s and they were very affordable. Mystifying gap. One, I go from 150 to 156. I gotta fix that. Strange Tales, 151 to 155. Find them. No. Immediately. 151, 152, 153, 154. Yeah, and 155. Right. Um, time waits for no man. General McEnany. You need something to do. Uh, uh one's what? Oh yeah, one sixty six. Nothing can halt a Voltorg, I'll have you know. Why is there an issue of Many Ghosts of Dr. Graves in the middle of Strange Tales? There's nothing remotely s about that. 131. What? What? The order is all out of order. What is going on? What's going on? This is nonsensical. Okay, how embarrassing. 
Maybe I'll find those missing comics now. Okay, so I had 130. 131 should be there. And then this is 132. Okay, put that in the right place. Another 132. I thought I had more strange tales. 134, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and of course the first Nick Fury, 135. Damn. 136. 137. And another 137. Okay, so what is going on here? a 151 out of order you know when I showed these strange tales in the episode from about a month ago I must have pulled them out of the box to make it easier and then I must have put them back in wrong I mean I'm gonna yeah because I have these issues there's 151 there's 152. I'm gonna have to call back the general and tell him. 153. 154. Oh, that's a great cover. It has to be Bill Everett. It's just too good. Um, 154. What? Then 151? What? No, 156. Oh, it's an extra 151. another 155. What? 154. No, 155, 156, 158, 165, 166. <sighs> what? 156, 158. Did I show you this cover? 158? Okay, 159, out of order. One sixty-five, one sixty-six. Okay, then one sixty. One fifty-eight. One sixty. Do I have two one sixties? What's going on? Fifty-eight, fifty-nine. I have two one sixties. So then you've got one sixty-five, one sixty-six. Oh no, one sixty-one. <laughs> Shit. Oh, what a wonderful cover. Sixty one sixty one sixty one sixty one one sixty seven one sixty seven okay and another one sixty seven that was a miserable experience okay so we got the strange tales in order now Yes, General. K 
cancel the order of uh, Strange Tales 151 through 154. They've been found. Yeah. So stand by. I'll let you know what comics you need to seek out. But those issues, we, we do not need extra copies of. Yeah? It, uh, you're, are you at Mar-a-Lago? Um, down in the basement? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, one week from now? Okay. We'll, um, we'll stock up, get, ex get some extra water. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. Big things going on with the general. Submariner number three. Um, Submariner and the Hulk were teamed up um, at half, both at half of Tales to Astonish, right? So, Tales to Astonish, when, when Marvel was given the green light to put out more titles, because for a while they were hampered by the distributor or something, Marvel is only allowed to put out a certain number of comics per month. I might be wrong, you can correct me in the comments below. So, that's why they had Strange Tales, and Tales of Suspense, and Tales to Astonish, where heroes were uh, teamed up, um, were, were got half of a comic book. Um, so, um, anyway, somehow they got, the, the, they did some, some, the distributor had some kind of deal with DC or something, I don't know, that... Marvel's only allowed to have a certain number of titles. Well, anyway, when they got the green light to put out more Tales to Astonish, the numbering of Tales to Astonish it just it became the Hulk from then on, and so the Hulk got the whole comic. Then Submariner got his own uh, comic, so it started with issue one, and same thing with Iron Man. He suddenly had an issue number one, even though he'd been published for years. And here's uh, a great Submariner number eight. And again, Submariner is one of those comics like Hawkman that uh, you can pick up pretty inexpensively because it's not one of the main things that people collect. And, and then who knows, you may build up a whole run of them and then they may put the Submariner in the next Black Panther movie. And, but, uh, you know, and I, I understand the guy that played... This, uh, Black Panther was a great actor and that was great and, uh, and I guess it's noble to say well we're not going to replace him with another actor because he passed away a few months ago but I disagree with that decision because uh, you know I don't think you just get rid of a character because some, even though you had a great actor and he passes away uh, they didn't do that with James Bond and now whatever storylines they'd plan to do with Black Panther marrying Storm or um, Black Panther going up against the Submariner. I mean, now Black Panther's going to be a teenage girl or, or what? I, yeah, you can, uh, I mean, maybe they'll make it work. Or maybe they'll make the, the villain in the last uh, Black Panther movie into the new Black Panther because... He was pretty well liked and was, uh, and I heard something this morning on some, somewhere that he's, he wants to come back or something, so. Uh, you, you don't need to get that attached to one actor because these are characters that, I've shown you all, I didn't show you all these, why, I showed you all these Submariner comics? Did I? I have no memory of it. Seriously? I, sh I showed you that? I don't even remember. Okay, 21. 22 also doesn't have a backing board. This has got the Doctor Strange when he had a, a mask. Let's open it up. There's other comics you could have uh, purchased that month. The 
love those house ads. You've got to subscribe to a guy on YouTube called Fred Flix. It's just F-R-E-D-F-L-I-X, all one word. He, um, oh, and he also, he has a great, it's just a pop culture uh, channel. It's great. And then he has a sister channel called the called Kirby Continuum. So look up Kirby Continuum. He has uh, great, uh, great videos. Um, um, and he has videos that are just nothing but Marvel house ads and stuff. We had a great meal last night. My wife made, uh, let's see, she was just like working with what we had in the refrigerator. And, and we had like lamb and bologna and uh, rice. And she made this wonderful meal with them. And then she's telling me as we ate that, that it's real healthy because the, the lamb uh, was fed vegetarian stuff or something. And I said, don't talk to me about this being a living creature while we're eating because... It, it, um, I was talking in a previous episode how I, I don't like to think about that this was once a living creature that was killed so we can eat it. I, I don't know. I guess I'm a sissy. Um, but I, uh, I really would like to just become a vegetarian. And uh, if they can just come up with fake food that tastes kind of real, I think they're kind of doing it. I hear a truck pulling up outside. Hope they're not coming to get me. <laughs> um, there's 37, Submariner. Need to fill in the gaps in my Submariner run. Here's 38. Because they have wonderful art. And, and a lot of the issues, or some of the issues, they bring Bill Everett back. Who drew um, Submariner? Well, who created the Submariner during the Golden Age? And Bill Everett, even in his elder years, was fantastic. There's 40. Oh, we're to Sugar and Spike. Number 81. There's a lot of issues of Sugar and Spike I gotta get. I love the comic. And Sheldon Meyer, um, you've probably heard the story before, um, found the illustrations sent, to, sent in by Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster of uh, Superman. He found him in the trash can and said, hey, these are pretty good. You guys should give a second look at this character that these guys have created. So if not for this artist here, Superman may not exist. Uh, except in the minds of a couple of teenagers from New York. that line tomorrow's teenagers I mean it really is I mean the, the art style is great but they're hard to find in the wild you know in comic book stores you know if they get them I don't even know if they even bother putting them out on the in, in the in the boxes for people to look at because it's not X-Men or Wolverine or Venom but um, I guess now with eBay and all that I don't have any excuse 95 
I should be reading numbers so I can make sure I don't have any more boo-boos. 97. And this is a fake one. Put out, I don't know, in the last 15 years at some point. This was a reprint put out. All right, we're up to the Super Comics. This will be going for a while. Superboy, number 80. Superboy 81. I really should change out that disc. That same music is played. Music. Sound effects, in this case, have played the last several episodes. Um, number 90. Still 10 cents when that guy was going, the steak, the steak, give me the steak. I remember that caused me to go off on a tangent about vegetarianism in a previous episode. It really is Groundhog Day. The same disc playing. The same Dr. Pepper. Well, what's different is I don't have some of the lights on back behind me. So it's not exactly like Groundhog Day. I'm talking about the movie which is really good. And now we're all living it with the um, this cold that was created in some lab somewhere to uh, turn us into slaves by our global masters. 96. Ooh, then we got 114. Oh, well, I've got another 114. Really nasty. Ooh, yucky. Copy of 117. But still. Oh, but I have another 117 that's in better shape. A bit of a spine roll, but. One eighteen. comics from this era from DC 123 129 Let's this game. I dropped the phone in a while um, that used to be something I would do like in every episode the, the, the phone would fall on the floor and you guys would fall with it. It, it hasn't happened. Watch it happen now. Uh, 136. Superboy visits the 50th century. It's a great cover, but I have a crummy copy of it. I'm just wondering why, why does Crypto have a full suit on instead of just the cape? Um... Haven't read this issue in a while, so I need to do that. 136. Also need to get a better copy, it looks like. 139. 141. <laughs> 141. <laughs> I'm sorry, the sounds of torture amuse me. It amuses me. You ever see a movie called Orgy of the Dead? <laughs> it's uh, Chris Welb, you know, the psychic that was famous in the 50s and 60s. That uh, they got to, uh, Ed Wood got to be in uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space and to introduce his movie. Uh, it was a real psychic, I even mean, he's terrible and fake psychic, but uh, um, he's he's uh, it's like it's like Chriswell sitting in a cemetery with a um, 
vampira looking uh, girlfriend that, that really looks a lot like Elvira because I think that's where maybe Elvira got the idea for the bouffant and I think she even has a dagger in her belt and they're they just for for like an hour and 20 minutes they just watch these kind of sleazy uh, 1965-66 era strippers dance around and <laughs> it seems like uh, he says, torture, torture, it pleases me. It's a, it's a warped movie. And there's a novelization of this movie. I don't understand how there's novelization of that movie when it's literally all dancing. Okay, so that looks like we're moving to Superman. And uh, there's no backing board in this, so we're going to open this up. This is Superman 149. That's pr pretty early. It's a 10 cent Superman. And in really good condition, you know. Lex Luthor, a hero. Ah, but look at that. I've always loved that. The cool thing is, there are books that are devoted to. Uh, those ads and what and, and have pictures of what you really would would have gotten if you had ordered from those ads, and you can see it on online too. You can see pictures of the submarine, and the cardboard tank that you know they they were selling for five dollars or whatever. So, Superman 149. One, we got two copies of 156. He's always dying, man. Oh man, I just love the Legion of Superheroes. I love the time travel. Do not be afraid. People that turn up their nose at uh, DC, it's just really foolish. Last Days of Superman. And if you do not leave at once, each of you will die one by one. So, great things about the internet is you can see what you really would have gotten had you ordered from those ads. You can... Uh, that you can just go to YouTube and listen to these Halloween sound effects records from the 60s anytime. You don't have to pull out a record or you don't have to go searching for decades at used record stores looking for them. It just press a few buttons and you're listening to uh, some wonderful record like this. And you can, you can go on and create a YouTube channel where you blather on about nothing and wind up making friends and um oh uh you know um captain strange life gave me a call yesterday and said hey i found out where that that barber shop is that uh it's a, uh, it's a long story and i said yeah i found out too when i finally was able to use my phone because my phone works and my wife's tablet is very confusing but, uh, oh, I, I, was, I found a comic book the other day. Uh, if you go back like three, two, three episodes, it had a stamp of a barber shop and it had the street, but it didn't have the town. And it was stamped all through the comic. You know, this is from this barber shop for kids to read while they're waiting to get their hair cut. And I just wanted to see that building still there. So I saw it said, we're near Henderson on something street. And so I figured it was Dallas. This is Henderson over there, and I looked it up, and it didn't didn't seem to match. And um, anyway, when I got to my, I looked at my phone. It was easy to find that it was actually. Uh, what? Oh, I made another mistake here. Uh, it is in uh, Columbus, Ohio. What is going on here? I skipped. The Man, I shouldn't be filming right now. Something's wrong with me. I skipped over a bunch of comics. Or did I? 
or they're out of order again. 149. We looked at that, right? 169. Okay, one. Okay, these 156s. Is, is did fall on the floor, so it did. That's not an official phone drop. I'll have you know. Yeah, these. I sh I, did I show you this one. I think I did. Isn't that great? Isn't that isn't isn't isn't? Don't you like that when people say isn't instead of isn't? I've become one of those morons. Okay, Mike Mercury supercar is probably needing to, uh, it must be golden age size. Somehow I skipped right past it. Yeah, this is going to have to be a uh, sleeve later when I get more golden age. Uh. Okay, so I guess I didn't show you Superboy 165. It was out of order. And why is... Oh, because it's Super DC Giant. That's the real name of the comic. That's why it's here. And then, what I thought was my oldest Superman comic was not my oldest Superman comic. I was showing you this, saying it's my oldest Superman comic, 149. It looks like my oldest Superman comic is 138. Okay, one Superboy, 147, 165. There's a lot of Superboy issues I need to get. Super DC Giant, Superman. Okay. Okay. So are we on uh, Superman? 169, perhaps. Here's another Superman 169 without a backing board. It is a whole different experience when you read old comic books. And there's old music playing. I don't know how... Well, I mean... I guess you could read this issue of Superman and have rap music playing wherever you're at. But somehow it doesn't work. You want to get the full experience of being a kid? This feels like a brand new comic book. It has this glossy, slick... You want to get the ex full experience of being a kid in May of 1964. Reading this Mr. Mixius Patolka story, or Mr. Mixius, Mr. Mixius, Mr. Mix, Mixius, Plitik, Mr. Mixius Patolk, Mr. Mix, Mix, Mix Plitolix, something like that. You want to, um, you gotta have the music of the time period playing. So it's a 1964 record, you should have the Beatles or, or the Beach Boys playing or something. The Animals, something. You gotta, you gotta get into that mindset. If you're reading a comic from the 50s, have this music playing. Or have this, this music works with this comic. I don't think Cardi B would work with, but then anyone that would listen to Cardi B would not want an old comic like this. They'd want some kind of drooling carnage kind of thing or big titties spilling out and the stuff of today 169 nothing wrong with titties it's just there seems to be a lot of comics that that's the whole point of the comic 172 oh this is one of those seal it yourself I can seal this. <laughs> Thanks to Man Bear Pig, I finally mastered the mystic art of sealing one of these resealable bags. 
I never could figure it out. Ooh, this has got a hell of a spine roll. And uh, whatever number it is, those purple covers make it impossible to read the number. I'll give it a try. Actually, kind of a brownish cover. Damn. 189, I believe. Superman 189. What number is Superman on now? Have they got into a thousand? Ooh, this is a horrible feeling bag. Um, another one of those purple covers. I'm maybe going to try to read the number. Oh, I need a. Oh, I've got a bunch that are going to need boards here. Superman 174. Yeah, these were the Aurora. In addition to making the monster kits, they had uh, slot cars. And my that's one thing that did come down to me for my older brothers is an Aurora slot car set. And they had the Black Beauty car. Although I think they took the stick, I think there was a sticker on the roof of the car, the the, the Hornet uh, symbol. I think they they must have taken it off. Look at this, and then of course Marks also was doing it. The store opened literally two blocks from me back about 10 years ago. It was an old gas station from the 50s. And all of a sudden, one day I'm driving by and it's an antique. It's like, I forget what it was called, but it was it, it was a place that sold 1950s old furniture from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and, and stuff. And uh, just like, wow. So I went in there and I uh, talked to the guy and I bought some stuff there, but um, ultimately I stopped going because the guy turned into a little bit of a weirdo. Well, I had to be quiet. Um, I'll, I'll explain. But uh, my whole point about that store is uh, I gave him some tapes of some of this old music like you're hearing, um, well, or the, or the, the Seaberg Company made to be played in department stores and drug stores back then in the 50s and 60s. So uh, for a while, he was playing the music. You would go in and you'd see all these sofas and furniture setups and you'd have the music that would have played in the store where that old furniture was sold back then. This this kind of happy uh, 50s shopping music. He played it for a while and then just kind of got, I guess, got tired of it every day. Uh, I'd never get tired of it, but anyway, it was really cool, but one time he got all these records in and I went through and they were, um, there was some great stuff in there like DJ copies, uh, uh, just all kind of great stuff and uh, some stuff records made by local radio stations stuff that I so I pulled out I went through he, uh, boxes and boxes I did his work for him and I pulled out the, the the ones that I wanted and I said I get paid in a week and a half you know hold these for me he says oh no problem of course what that caused the SOB to do he looked up every record that I had pulled out and he realized, oh, oh, these must be the valuable ones. <laughs> and then he, he, when I went back to get those records, he'd already listed some of them on eBay. Wait a second, they're, they're, uh, you're, you're, you're supposed, to, do you have any honor at all? These were supposed to be, you know, I would have paid that price, but you, you listed them on eBay, the stuff that was in my hold stack. After that, I didn't really trust the guy much anymore. He runs estate sales around here now. So who knows, he might see this video, so I probably should be quiet. But I don't even remember his name, but, uh, you know, I just thought that was kind of dirty. You know, if I do the dirty work, because I was literally, it was literally dirty work, because there was, you know, these records probably been stored in a barn or something. My, my fingers were dirty. I had gone through and found the best. He already had a sale. He just had to wait a week or so until I could get paid and come in and buy them and, and uh, you know, um, on a school teacher's salary, you know, I'm not a high, high dollar. And of course, even if I had 
had the money with me, he wouldn't have sold them to me right then because he would have wanted to look them up because that's just... You gotta know your shit if you're a, a antique dealer where you can uh, be quick about it. I don't know. Anyway, the business ultimately failed and now it's a, uh, a real estate agency, but they still kept the gas station theme. They put an old gas pump inside the window and then every time they make a sale, they, they have a big sign that looks like the price of gas, like... Uh, you know, a dollar twenty-three, and, and but it's really we've sold one hundred twenty-three homes. So as they sell homes, the number goes up until it doesn't look like an old gas station anymore. It'll have a number that'll look like uh, what the gas is about to be here under Biden. But we all love Biden. He's such a kind, sweet old man. Oh, what a nice guy. He's. I read this morning that he's already deported hundreds of uh, people. He said he wasn't going to do that. Oh, shocking. Can you imagine a dishonest politician? Okay, so that's 173. What is going on here? Damn, someone was not smart on this comic, and it was not me. 170-something. Somebody pulled the shit. <laughs> about the worst tape damage you can do. Okay, but it feels so wonderfully slick and uh, an ad for G.I. Joe when it was a brand new thing. Fighting Man. But see, the thing is, back originally, what do they call him? An action soldier? America's movable fighting man, over 11 inches tall. This is an actual photo, not a drawing. See, the thing is, what you can't get past is it's a doll. And I remember in the 70s when Mego was putting out their world's greatest superhero uh, dolls and Planet of the Apes and Star Trek. You know, they were called Mego dolls. We called them Mego dolls, but they were like dolls for guys, but they were still dolls. And, and at some point, some brilliant marketer came up with the term action figure so that guys weren't playing with dolls. But I remember as an elementary school kid calling them Mego dolls. So, so G.I. Joe just got away with calling it America's movable fighting man. So if he's a fighting man, then he's certainly not a doll that you play dress up with. Even though you kind of do change his outfits. Yes, but they're uniforms. You change his weapons. They aren't. It's not like you're putting prom dresses on him. Okay. Superman 178, I think that says. Come on, come on, come on. We're coming up to a lot of big, giant comics. 174. Oh, I gotta really know what this cover number is, actually. 176, okay. Okay, I've got two more that I need to sleeve. The Menace Called It. Reminds me of, uh, kind of reminds me of Warlock on the cover, you know, of Fantastic Four. What was, what was he called? Him? another G.I. Joe ad. It's... Ooh. There's the... Um, the model kits from... Um, what? Uh, Stanley Mouse, right? I think it's really the guy that invented the, that crazy look. 
uh, not Big Daddy Ross, but but he's the one that's remembered. Mouse is remembered now more as a rock poster guy later on in the in the decade when he was doing like Grateful Dead kind of stuff. Um, Superman 179 also needs support. Oh shit, what the fucking hell? Uh, damage alert. This is 179. The, on the G.I. Joe ad here, what does that say? I think maybe it's a plea from a kid to like get me this for Christmas but I can't really maybe you can decipher it I should let my wife look at it she might be able to decipher it great but unfortunately it is uh, bled through to the to the comic page. Huh? There's a story behind that. Oh, there's more of it. It's just it's just insanity. It's like a mental patient. It's like maybe this was in a well, an award, like in one flew over the cuckoo's nest or something. It looks like a baby drew on it, but then there's actual words. So, you know, it looks like, like a baby, but then it also looks like it was maybe just a deranged, insane adult. So this is 179. But even the comics that once belonged to mental patients will get a backing board here in the vault of Gratu. Maybe, I guess I don't have two copies of this issue. But I definitely think I could upgrade on this one. Um, some writing I don't mind, and some is... I don't know. I'm sure there's an interesting story behind that. Um, Superman 181. One eighty two, one eighty three, a lot of eighty page giants, another copy of one eighty three. First, I thought they were. <laughs> first, I thought they were gonna like. Uh, they all had marshmallows, and they were gonna cook their marshmallows as Superman burns. But no. I got two copies of this one. How about that? Ooh. Okay. One eighty-seven needs a backing board. I always love that and wished that that was in the Christopher Reeve Superman. You know, they they designed, redesigned the whole idea of his Fortress of Solitude and had it made of crystals and everything. Uh, but the, the idea that the giant key that opened the Fortress of Solitude was always a, 
wonderful thing. That's a Golden Age reprint. It's just a, it's a bunch of reprints of cool old Superman comics. I'm going to try to get through this box, this episode, 187, 1, 1, and then I bought it, it looks like I bought it again at some point, it says $22, but I think that's a half price, that red dot over there means half price, so I must have paid $11 for it, because I didn't know I already had it. Here's uh, 188, but it needs a backing board. Well, wow. <laughs> what a coincidence. An all bizarro issue, one oh two. One oh two? No, two oh two. So why is one this is out of order, one eighty eight. I have three copies of this issue because I love the gold key, uh, the, the key to the Fortress of Solitude so much. So I have 187. Okay, so I have two issues of 188. I have two copies of it. Okay, then 190. Which is an 80 page giant. Okay, then 195. Then 202. Oh, that's got a sealable thing. Okay, we're gonna man bear pig this. Cool. About the only thing I've learned how to do this year. 202. Everything's out of order. Maybe I should call this episode. This episode is out of order. The out of order episode. Okay, Superman 195, 193, 195, but then 191 is out of order. 188. 190, 191, 195, 202. What? Okay, I have two issues of 202. I thought I did. No, <laughs> I have three issues of 202 because I bought it over and over again because it was bizarro and I guess I didn't remember if I had it. 
And obviously, I love Bizarro stuff. So 198 goes before 202. 197 goes before that. Okay. All right. Then there's Superman 207. The 30th anniversary. Wow, 38 to 68. Okay, then we're getting into, to me, the more modern era. The Neil Adams looking art. Needs a backing board. Superman radio spot coming on the radio right when we're looking at the Superman comics. I did not plan that. They, you know, they, uh, they say there are no coincidences. Oh well. And then there was before that there was a GI Joe commercial on there that, and we had just been talking about GI Joe. Seven two eight two twelve. And here's another two twelve that looks like it was sitting in a seven eleven window. Comic book racks like this behind me were always usually not in the interior of a store but at the window of the store because they wanted to attract kids' attention. And uh if the comic book sat long enough baking in a hot area, you know, then it would uh, bleach the colors out of a uh, comic book cover, just like uh, fluorescent light will do. So you shouldn't have fluorescent light in your comic book room, especially if you have a comic book wall. And I don't know about these little CFL bulbs, whether they'll bleach comics. I just use a regular light bulb. I know that that Trump made it okay to sell real light bulbs again, but I'm sure it, that O'Biden will ban them again as soon as he, if he hasn't thought of it already. But, um, yeah, fluorescent light is not good around comic books. Um, so, what was my point? Oh, that, that comic, I think, had been exposed to sunlight sometimes it's only the top and, and it, it depends on what kind of environment you live in like in Texas comics that came from Texas that were in a super 7-eleven window long enough uh, are, are gonna have sustained some damage here's a uh, Superman King Kong cover for this great Aurora model kit ad on the back when they first started making them glow, and boy, did they glow. Um, I don't know what they used in the plastic, but the glow would light up a room. It can't have been healthy. <laughs> they were using something, the stuff, Things glowed a lot better. The glow-in-the-dark toys glowed a lot more back then. The Green Ghost game, the Hasbro Kooky Spooky um, hand puppets, little ghosts, they will, I, I have two of them. Um, and uh, I think uh, they, uh, they will light up a room. It's, it's like a flashlight. 202, okay. 222, 226. Oh, I got a bunch of comics here that need bags, don't I? Almost the rest of the ones in this whole box need bags. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Oh, boy. What a disaster. 
Okay. Well, that's what we're here for, right? We're building it back better. It's the great reset of the comic book collection. All right. I have a couple of copies of this issue, which is 227. Reprints. Cool reprints. Rad. Okay, well, today is the day of the week. Is, this, is two, this is Tuesday, isn't it? If it's Tuesday, this must be Belgium. If it's Wednesday, this must be Rome. If it's Wednesday, this must be... This Aurora tank head. Cool. 228. 230. got to get these Superman comics finished. We're already up to the 15 cent era, so we don't have that many more to go. And then we'll be up to Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. Then Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. kid, my brother's first wife, my oldest brother's first wife, um, told me that PAL stood for personal ass liquor. You know, she was just in her 20s. You know, you're, 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 <laughs> I didn't realize how, you know, kind of horrifying that is. And I, 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 said, I said to my mom, you know, PAL stands for personal ass liquor. I was a little kid. <laughs> Where did you hear that from? <laughs> you know, my brother's wife. She said, oh, she must be, oh, she's a horrible woman. <laughs> Just, you know, a little kid innocently creates, uh, like, <laughs> Just, uh, I need to, uh, all right. This is, um, Superman going to hell to save Lois Lane. Oh, we finally, uh, my wife's been addicted to Supernatural for years, and uh, I started watching it later on uh, uh, when this good friend of mine told me that, you know, this show is great. And so I'd watch it with him, and then when I met my wife, you know, she was really into it, and had watched every episode, so I started watching it. Well, anyway, I guess the last episode of the whole series aired a few months ago or something, but we finally got around to watching it last night, and um, seeing the, I won't spoil it for you, but um, it's got a big spine roll. Um, it's a weird show, man. Um, it's a show where the, the, the angels and God are, 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 are just as just as bad as the bad demons pretty much it's like a kind of blasph kind of very blasphemous but 
they're so likable, such like a likable show that you just somehow put aside the, to how they portray these things. But uh, it's a kind of kind of interesting show. But the one I wish they had just kept going with. You know, they went 15 years. Imagine if Kolchak the Night Stalker had gone for 15 years instead of one measly season. Boy, I loved that show when I was in fourth grade. <laughs> fourth grade. <laughs> okay. And um, 2.48, Superman. If I owned a restaurant, I would pipe this record into the restrooms. We look around, we see houses that are like amazing, like amazing houses that have historical markers in the front yard you know this but then it turns out that this community has you will have a one in 29 chance of being uh, a victim of a violent crime in this city you should look up the city on google right and then put crime and then you get area vibes and neighborhood scout and they tell you how many murders rapes assaults break you know, everything that's happened in that community and then it's like oh well that's why they're selling this amazing mansion for so little this is an amazing incredible cover even even an Alfred e. Newman Superman this is Superman annual number three so I just put it after Superman in my numbering Here's another one. This is number uh, five. I need a vacuum port. I'm actually in the next box, so I need to kind of stop here. Because I promised you I would not keep going. Oh, that worked. Here's 80 page giant. Issue number six. It needs a board. Well, I saw there was another Silver Age Day broadcast last night. I actually caught most of it live. Um, he's been back uh, for, a, he's done three or four uh, broadcasts after being gone for a couple of months. And, Captain Strange Life's come back and done several broadcasts. So, I feel like all the real super giant greats in the community are starting to come back. And, uh, and there's Dr. Silver Age, and there's uh, Apta Comics, and maybe they'll do some more videos soon. Because um, people must be getting tired of this. Is kind of an amateur collection that you're seeing here. This is not impressive, like you know these guys that make major. They buy major collections and stuff. Here's uh, 249. Oh, I um. Okay, only one more Superman comic, then we move to Lois Lane, so next issue, next episode, I always say next issue, next episode we'll, uh, 
We'll start with Lois Lane, and we'll get through Jimmy Olsen, and we'll we'll get through Thor, and even Tarzan will be in that box. Tarzan said, "Hey, you forgot me. I'm before Thor." Yes, you are. Come on. All right. So, having finished with the Superman comics, we can go ahead and put a lid on box number eight. And next episode, we'll be in box number nine. You know, it's not a cola, not a root beer. It's the light and lively taste that you'll cheer. Need to drink it at 10, 2, and 4. I have no idea what time it is right now, but ooh, I bet this phone's about to die to expire. I don't have a, I didn't bring the cord in here. Oh my gosh. That's horrific. Electric cords. In there. Let's head on in there. Okay. Let's hunt on in there. Well, we're back in the Bronze Age room. <sighs> okay, we need to get some uh, electrical power into this telephone. <clears throat> How can we do that? Shit. Oh, this is gonna be complicated, but it's gonna be all right. Never fear, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I have to move my 
to charge this phone. That's probably good. <laughs> All right. Just a moment. Yeah. Yeah, uh, tell security to um, seal up the uh, room three. Yeah, I just left there. Um, yeah, all the lights are off. Just seal it up. I'm over in, uh, I'm in room one. Yeah. By the helicarrier. Yeah, the, yeah, floor seven, room one. Yeah, um, just, just let you know. All right. All right, take care, bye. Okay. Let's see what we can look at here. Uh, here is the um, first issue with Tigra. I was wrong in the last episode. Tigra is what, Greer Garson or something. No, it's not Greer Garson, I forgot. Uh, Patsy Walker it took the old costume of... Uh, before she was Tigra, she was the cat. And then I guess um, Patsy Walker, who used to be like an Archie kind of character uh, for Marvel, they wrote her into the superhero continuity and had her uh, become uh, Hellcat. And I remember reading those when she was in the Avengers. Uh, my memory after 50 years is a little fuzzy, but I was corrected. And uh, that's good. So... Yeah. Um, yeah, Patsy Walker, indeed. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, this is, uh, I framed this. I, I, uh, this is from the National Lampoon. There was a issue of National Lampoon, like a, I forget what it was called, but, um, I had two copies of it, and one I got, you know, for like a dollar. It was heavily damaged, so I cut this page out of it and framed it. It's a lost issue of Sergeant Fury. The cool thing about National Lampoon is when they did a parody, they made it look exactly like, you know, they like what they were making fun of, and right down to the point of hiring the actual artist that uh, that worked on. The original comics. So, um, I'm checking the news to see what's going on. There's, um, there's no telling what's been going on in the world since um, we started this episode. Let's see, what is O Biden up to? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Joe Biden. Yeah, um, I don't know if you guys like Joe Biden or not, but uh, um, you know, Joe Biden. You know, whenever I think of Joe Biden, I um, seem to think of uh, he's just, he's just. Fucking hell. What's he up to now? Joe Biden, ladies and gentlemen. Something's wrong with that potato. <laughs> Joe 
Biden came stumbling in from across the sea. He lingered there to touch your hair and walk with me. All summer long, we sang a song and then we strolled the golden sand. Two sweethearts and Joe Biden Like painted kites Those days and nights They went flying by The world was new Beneath the blue Umbrella sky And softer than a hunter man One day he called to you I lost you, I lost you to Joe Biden The autumn wind and the winter wind They have come and gone And still the days, those lonely days, they go on and on. And guess who sighs his lullabies through nights that never end? My fickle friend, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, oh Joe Biden, mm, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, but you know, how about that Kamala Harris, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Kamala Harris, some call her Kama Sutra Harris, or uh, let's see, what else they call her? Uh, Heels Up Harris, I've heard her called that too. You know, uh, she was quite a, uh, let's see what else is going on in the news here. Let's see, let me check the news. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'll look up the news here. It's got to be something going on in the news. A gloomy Groundhog Day. Punk Rock Silly Phil says more winter. Yeah, I told you about that earlier. There's a photograph to prove that it's true. Let's look at, um, oh, you got to look at this. It's Populist Press. Have you looked that up? Populist, is it Populist.press? Because, you know, Drudge Report isn't any good anymore. But Let's see if this is the one. Populist.press. Okay, it's taking a while. Oh, yeah, see, that's Populist.press. Okay, they made it look like the Drudge Report. Um, it says, Joe Biden just commits to major fraud cover-up. Hundreds of illegals already deported under Biden. Hmm. Read the full legal brief against President Trump. Uh, it's got all the all the news that's fit to read. You gotta look up populist.press. That's where you go. Yeah. Let's see what else they have to say. Um Well, these people are crazy on here. Um, you know, here in the comic book room, up here on the seventh floor, sometimes it just kind of feels like the walls are closing in on you. Uh, yeah, sure. 
fucking kiss. I am. Yes, indeed. What else is going on in the news? <laughs> but you know, every morning. You know, sometimes it helps to sing a few songs. It helps you remember that the world's not as fucking horrible as you think. Whenever I chance to meet some old friends on the street, they wonder how does a man get to be this way? Always got a smiling face, any time and any place. And every time they ask me, I just smile and say, You've got to kiss an angel good morning And let her know you think about her when you're gone Kiss an angel good morning And love her like the devil when you get back home Yes sir, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Pepper, it's the uh, friendly Pepper Upper. This is Diet Dr. Pepper, this is for assholes that uh, drink this shit. But, um, god damn it, god damn it. You know, um, sometimes you're out on the road and now they want you to wear two masks on the road. Seems like there's nothing but signs, stuckies, truck stops, and horrible people. But you got to keep a positive attitude and just remember that Kentucky Fried Chicken is your friend. And that there's no delivery fee if you get it from Uber Eats. Pulled out of Pittsburgh, rolling down the eastern seaboard. I got my diesel wound up and she's running like a never before. There's a speed zone ahead, alright. I don't see a cop inside. See the dude on the road, and I'm gonna make it on the dog. I got ten four gears and a Georgia overdrive. I'm taking little white pills and eyes are open wide. Just past Jimmy on a white, been passing everything inside. Seen days on the road, I'm a good old bird, I'm a good old bird. Well, seen like a month since I kissed my baby goodbye. I could have a lot of women, but I'm not like some other guys. I could find one to hold me tight, but I could never make believe it's all right. Six days on the road, I'm a good old bird, I'm a good old bird. CC is checking on down the line. I'm a little low when my love works way behind. But nothing bothers me tonight. I can dodge all the skills, alright. Six days on the road, I'm a gonna make it roll to die. Well, my rig's a little low, but that don't mean she's slow. No motherfucker. Yeah, there's a flame from her neck, and her soda bit is blowing my coat. My hometown's coming inside. If you think I'm happy, you're right. Six days on the road, and I'm gonna make it home tonight. That's my fucking dream. Six days on the road, and I'm gonna make it home tonight. Cheers. Six days on the road. Six days on the road, and I'm gonna make it home tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna make it home tonight. 
Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, we can have fun even in Joe Biden's America, even though they're trying to turn us into slaves with these masks and these orders to stay at home. Um, it, uh, but we've got comic books. We always will have comic books, and comic books are what keep this community together. And, um, Sunshine came softly through my eye. A window today could have tripped out easy, but I've changed my way. It'll take time, but I know in a while you're gonna be mine. I know it. We we'll, we'll do it in style. Cause I've made my mind I'll tell you right now Any trick in the book and out, baby All that I can find Everybody's hustling just to have a little scene When I say we'll be cool, I think you know what I mean we stood on a beach at sunset. Do you remember when? I know a beach where, baby, it never ends. When you've made your mind up, I'll pick up your hand and slowly blow your little mind. Cause I made my mind up I'll tell you right now You're drinking the fuck out, baby All that I can find Ladies and gentlemen, um, not a not a cola or a root beer. The light and lively taste that you'll cheer. <laughs> Let's see here. What songs would you like to hear, ladies and gentlemen? Because I'm really bored here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see what we can do here. The fans are already screaming. Uh, let's 
see. Oh yes. There's never enough cooks. You know, the there's kitchen. never enough cooks here, ladies and gentlemen. Chris. Here on uh, YouTube. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh! 
destiny when you hold my hand I understand the magic that you do you're my dream come true my one and only you can make this a change in me for it's true you are my destiny density when you hold my hand I understand the magic that you do you're my dream come true, my one and only you. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. Som in chanted evening You may see a stranger You may see a stranger Across a crowded room And somehow you know You know even then That somehow where well, you'll see her Again and again. Some enchanted evening. Someone may be laughing. <laughs> you may hear them laughing across a road and night after night as strange as it seems the sound of her laughter will stink in your dreams who can explain it who, 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 I dare you who can tell you why fools give you reasons Wise men never try. Fools from enchanted evening. When you find your true love, when you feel her call you across a crowd of the room, then you fly to her side. And make her your own All through your life You may dream all alone Once you have found her Never let her go once you have found her, never let her go. You know, ladies and gentlemen, um, that song always reminds me that Dr. Pepper is a great drink to drink. Tune two and four. Oh, no, it says low battery. Do you imagine? Where's my electrical cord? 
Oh, Jesus. Uh, sorry. All right, fans, I'm going to have to uh, charge this phone. Okay. Get, get some, gotta get some electricity going here. This phone's gonna die. This phone's gonna expire. This phone's gonna, gonna, gonna pass away without this electrical cord. Okay. We have a slight reprieve. <laughs> like the electricity is now flowing into the iPhone. Electricity is important.
the checkers game with but grandson you know, and grandson. You're the Grouch Warlock show brought to you in color. What the fuck was that? This is the kitchen where the new boyfriend will unofficially boy. become family. These are the Verbo vacation homes waiting for your family. Perhaps I'm seeing things. I don't know. Or perhaps it was an angelic appearance. Senhor. 